Hello, this is Oliver Phillips from Avalon and you're watching Live Draw. As a reviewer there was this German band I heard of and I was interested in. So I contacted the label to see if I could get a review copy of that band. But unfortunately I couldn't, so I didn't get one and well, I moved on because I had of course a lot of other music to review and I kind of forgot about that band. Until the end of 2012, that same label sent me an email and said, hey man, would you be interested in reviewing some remasters of that German band? Well, I said, hey, well, yeah, of course, I am interested, definitely. Let me send them up, you know, I can finally hear that band because in all these years, I never had a chance to hear that band. That band was anyone's daughter. An English name, but a, as I said, a German band. They sent me four albums. You've seen them in the intro, but here we are. As you can see, four remastered albums, uh, well, from the beginning period of that band in, well, the early 80s. So, a bit of classic German music. A little bit of history. This band was founded in 1972. However, it took them until 1979 to finally release their debut album called Adonis. Now, that is an album I have not in this pile. I have not heard it. Um, but when I looked up the history of the band and I couldn't find very much about them, strangely enough, even on their own website, but well, their website is in German, so I couldn't understand much of it. But Wikipedia only had a little bit of information, but what it did say, and that made me interested, of course, is that their debut album, Adonis, was often compared to Selling England by the Pound by Genesis. So, okay, that's something to keep in mind. Well, the band released a couple of albums, but in 1986 they called it a day. They, well, didn't quit entirely, but they went on a sort of hiatus. But some 15 years later, in 2001, the band reformed. They released a few albums again, uh, but the last album was made in 2006. And I have no idea if the band is still active today. I couldn't really get that information from the website. Anyway, here we are. Four albums. The first album I have for you in this Anyone's Daughter special is this one. The self-titled album and it is The artwork is the first thing I noticed. I love this cover. I think it's really beautiful, very proggy. Absolutely. Um, but then I started listening to the album and I looked at the songs and, and I no noticed that the songs are all very short between one and a half minutes and five minutes well it said already in the liner notes that the band was moving toward shorter songs so I don't know why they did that but no, that's something I noticed um, also it just as from what I gather their debut album is also sung in English of course with a little bit of a German accent in it um, but musically, I, I listened to the album and I didn't really find it sparkling. There was not much dynamics in the music. Um, the, 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 the sound levels were more all the same. You know, if, if you would visualize the sound level of the entire album, it would be one flat line, you know, maybe a few hints in there because of some nice guitar solos and some nice keyboard solos that, that was 
the one thing that stood out for me. There's one longer track on the album, which is definitely one of the nicer tracks. It's called Another Day Like Superman, which clocks about eight minutes. Uh, that is a very nice track. Um, of course, I listened, you know, do I hear this Genesis reference, this Genesis link in it? Never. At no point, you know, this band sounds, well, like anyone's daughter. I don't hear any other recollections in it. The only link I heard to another band was in the song Enlightenment, uh, which has a very nice Floydian guitar solo. Um, talking about proggy progressive, uh, there's one other track that stood out a little bit. It's called Moria. And yes, it is inspired by Lord of the Rings, um, which is a bit of a more an up-tempo song. That song was a single of the band for the band. Uh, that was a single of this album, and of course, well, very important uh, for the band to get heard and to get a wider audience. But apart from that, you know, um, of course, it's a remaster. You have bonus tracks, but in this case, it's just three live versions of songs that you find on the album. And again, to be very honest. Nothing very spectacular. It is absolutely a nice album. It's not a bad album, uh, absolutely not, but it, it didn't keep me interested. You know, this uh, when I was playing this, it would be like more like background music. When you have people over for visiting, this would be a nice album to play. You still have some progressive rock, you know, but still you can have nice chats and everything. The fourth album of the band, this one, In Blau. Now, if you've noticed, we, we miss one. We missed the first one and we miss now the third one. The third one was called Pictos Verwandlungen, and that turned out to be one of the more successful albums of the band. And that was sung in German. And then they had that choice what do we do? We go back to English, as we did on the first two albums, or we go and move on in German. The band decided to stick with the German. They also changed their sound a bit, and that is one of the reasons why this one is so far my favorite album of this band. Despite the fact that they sing in German, which is something I don't really like, but musically the album got more interesting. Especially starting with the second track, Für ein kleines Mädchen, for a little girl. Um, we find a lot of acoustic guitars here, and that is nice, and that sounds completely different from, well, the other album I heard from them making the whole music, the whole sound of the band different. And that is also one thing I definitely enjoy about this band, that they don't repeat themselves, but they do move on. So they are a progressive band, regardless of you know, the length of their songs. Also, in another track, Nichts für mich, Nothing for me, the rhythm section really comes out. You know, in, in, uh, in Anyone's Daughter, uh, the, the, the second album, the, the rhythm section was kind of modest, you know, you, you, well, I would almost say you barely noticed it. Um, here it's more upfront, it's more in your face. They stand out and they work together with the rest of the band a lot better. And that is something I very much appreciate. Also, the songs on this album are longer again. And especially the last track of the album, Tanz und Tod, Dance and Death, clocks 15 minutes. It's a really epic song. an absolute highlight of this album. There is so much to listen to. Um, but this, this, this song has a fantastic piano section in the middle. It's, it's really stunning. Then it is followed by a fantastic guitar solo as well. That is a highlight of the album. I would almost say, you know, um, that song would be a good reason to get this album. Also, we have bonus tracks on this album, and the first bonus track is called Sonne slash Adonis Medley, which clocks over 13 minutes, where they go back to their debut album. It's live, so that's cool as well. And again, you know, that is a fantastic song. And that is a bonus track worth to be on the album, because that adds something. That is not a repetition, you know, a live repetition of a previous track, but that is something different. 
and again it is a great track so there's there's a lot more to enjoy also the Hammond sounds on this album are absolutely fantastic so so far you know this is a big step forward compared to well I only have four albums so if I compare I compare to the albums I have in this review and not to you know missing albums in this review this is a big step up from anyone's daughter despite the German vocals <laughs> album by anyone's daughter was released in 1983 and that would be their last studio album before they went on a hiatus in 1986 and it is this one Neue Sterne well as you can see they decided you know we're gonna stick to German let's do that you know it's easier once again we have an album that sounds completely different from the previous albums I mean the first one was was kind of slow the second one was a lot more proggy with nice acoustic guitars and, and longer tracks epic tracks this one again goes back to the shorter songs but it's more up tempo the, the pace is a little faster here but it's also more poppy and that has a lot to do with uh, the, the the new German wave uh, where they had a lot of new pop bands just you know popping up everywhere and just you know bringing out a song and then you never heard of them uh, again. And, and and the title track Neue Sterne is a sort of a protest against you know that happening. You know the they, they, the band was more like music has to have some value, not just one day hit wonders. You know, but music has to have a lasting value. What I also like about this album is it has some really nice, very progressive, um, sometimes even electronic sounding songs on it. Um, two songs that definitely stand out for me are Das Poppenspiel, uh, the puppet play, and Consequenzen, Consequences, um, because well, especially the last one is, is uh, electronic, very electronic, it's instrumental, uh, and they, they have a, a sort of a touch of Kraftwerk in them, so it shows again a little a different influence in the music, but very nice. But I gotta be honest, apart from that, it's more prog pop, um, and it didn't really appeal to me. Uh, not as much as In Blau did, uh, and maybe even not as much as the first album Anyone's Daughter did, because that was at least classic progressive rock, rather than this more up-tempo, upbeat, poppy prog. Um, again, three bonus tracks, but again, live tracks from tracks you already have on the album. So, um, yeah, okay. Neue Sterne, that's it. to the last release in this review which was also the last release of the band before their 15 year hiatus a live album and a double live album at that now that's of, of course a, a sort of a, a farewell gift to the fans the album was not recorded in one show it was recorded at several shows but uh, you know they, they mixed everything up and put it together and it sounds definitely very amazing um, in the liner notes, it says something that really impressed me. It says that every song that you hear in this album is not overdubbed, it's not edited, it's, they didn't do anything to it. What you hear is exactly what they played in that particular show. Now that is impressive because this album sounds really amazing. This is a winner. When, it, when I look back on all four albums, this is a winner, definitely, because the band sounds phenomenal here. Live, you know, they sound, they, they, they really sparkle, they really make you enthusiastic a lot more than you have on the studio albums. Um, the first disc has the more shorter songs, uh, you know, which, which, you know, the poppy prog songs, um, although it starts on a very high note with consequence, and that is one of my favorite songs of what I've heard so far from this band. Um, and, and live again, you know, Matthias Olmer shines here as a star. He plays the synths, the Hammonds, the pianos, the keys, everything. 
um, this is his song but he shines throughout the whole album but the whole band plays very tight on these shows that they recorded here um, they also include Tanz und Tod on this one but unfortunately a shortened version I mean the original version is 15 minutes and this one is six so you miss out a lot which is a shame I wish they had played it in full sides of them as well because um, at the end of the album November and Sambuca are more acoustic tracks but they, they have this more Spanish maybe South American sound to them so it's very interesting to hear another different kind of angle on their music um, and the final track Carrara is again a very electronic piece you know, so they do that as well the second disc has some more longer tracks uh, and there they fortunately also pick out some tracks from their first album, Adonis, um, Come Away, for example. Um, they close with a very lengthy song, again, Ado Anyone's Daughter. Um, interesting, Anyone's Daughter is also a Deep Purple song. Um, I, I tried to compare them and see if this was that Deep Purple song that they covered. It could be, but you know, maybe they give it their own interpretation. I don't know for sure, but it sounds very good and it is the ending of the album and it really blows you away so live the band absolutely delivers so for albums what's the verdict then oh let's go back to them um anyone's daughter i love the cover but the music couldn't keep my attention so it's nice progressive rock it's nice to play as background music when you have people over or when you're working you know doing something uh, but it didn't keep my attention very much. In Blau, that really surprised me. I love that album very much. Despite the German vocals, it had a lot of interesting music, a lot of variation, a lot of dynamics, interesting songs. So this one I definitely love and I definitely recommend. one nah, to be honest it was too poppy for me um, too up tempo there are a couple of tracks that I definitely enjoyed but apart from that I think this is uh, this this album I liked the least of all four well and of course where did I put it the live album is the absolute winner if you are unfamiliar with anyone's daughter like I was and you are interested in knowing this band and you think where shall I start get this one get the live album that is definitely a very good starting point and that will show you how brilliant this band really is which not always comes out on the studio albums but on live they are absolutely brilliant I don't know why but for some reason this album just you know has that magic touch that X factor that people like to say these days um, life is a good starting point but other than that I also recommend in Blau so uh, well, that was my take on Anyone's Daughter. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope well, you know a little bit more about the band. Um, make sure to check out LifePark.com for a lot more reviews on a lot more different bands. Um, well, and hope to see you at a, another review. Thank you for watching.